Hello adventurers, I'm out here in the pines uh, just for a bit of fresh air but I thought I'd do a video on a, a really interesting subject based uh, around navigation. These days when we use our GPS the, you know, the path's basically nearly written on the road for us and we just follow the arrow or follow the map, the moving map. But um, we sort of take it for granted but it, uh, it definitely wasn't always that way. So back in history, latitude was quite easy to, uh, to work out. There was, uh, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, which, which I'll use in this example, the, um, there was a star called Polaris, which was a North Star and, and basically didn't move. It sat right above the North Pole. So you could get a, like an inclinometer and uh, you could look at the North Star and you could basically work out exactly where you were, degrees, um, from north so if uh, you looked at the north star with the inclinometer and lined it up and it said uh, 35 degrees that meant your latitude was 35 and that was the same anywhere in the in the world and and they had a similar system for uh, in the southern hemisphere using uh, using stars but for longitude that was a lot different so longitude they could never really work that out pre about 1720 it was very difficult to work out and they used basically dead reckoning so they had an idea of their speed and an idea of where they were going as this is ships i'm talking here mainly and they knew around about where they were but obviously they weren't um, perfect at it because most of the shipwrecks off the wa coast happened because they ran into the uh, ran into the coast because their longitude was uh, wrong and they miscalculated it. And uh, middle of the night, normally when they couldn't see, they would run clean into the reef, and that's what caused most of the wrecks um, because they had to come from Africa, and then they had to know when to turn north, and they used to uh, try and dead reckon a latitude to do that. So the reason they couldn't work out latitude is because. To work out latitude, you need to have some reference, a reference, and that reference is time. And back in those days, they didn't have any clocks. All the, all the accurate clocks were pendulum clocks and wouldn't work on, uh, on a ship when it was rocking around in the ocean, so they couldn't use any pendulum clocks. So they couldn't have any accurate time reference. It just didn't work. The, so the latitude problem was so important that at the time, the government actually put together a competition, 20,000 pounds, which is millions of dollars in today's money, to anybody who could work out uh, the latitude problem. And there was all sorts of weird, weird suggestions, um, voodoo type situations with dogs to where they would stick a pin in something and the dog would yelp and, and they would do that at noon in Greenwich and that would mean it was noon anywhere in the world and all, all this really crazy sort of stuff. But really what they needed was a, was a clock. A clock that could be set at Greenwich time and then as they sailed around that clock would keep accurate time and then they would be able to work out you know, exactly where they were from that. So what they needed to do was work out exactly when noon was, solar noon at their location and then they could reference that back to solar noon um, at Greenwich. And because they know the earth rotates at about 15 degrees an hour, they could easily work out exactly where they were, um, in uh, exactly which latitude they were. Uh, it's getting a bit boggy here. We'll uh, get through this. <clears throat> so along came a guy called uh, John Harrison. And over the next 50 years, uh, he developed four clocks. Uh, the first one was quite a large clock and and was uh, a lot better. And we're talking uh, losing sort of you know, seconds, seconds per month, uh, so, you know, uh, parts of a second per day sort of accuracy. So when they moved from England to say the West Indies, they could uh, pretty well calculate their, their uh, longitude down to uh, a mile or so, uh, which when, in the, when you're in the middle of an ocean is uh, quite good. So he spent uh, about 50 years refining his first sort of large clock down to pretty well what he had as a as a, a pocket 
a pocket watch, a large pocket watch about, about five inches in diameter. And that was the last one he ever made and was the most accurate. And as you can imagine, back then, if you could work out latitude, um, you know, when you're in the Navy uh, fighting other ships, that would have been the equivalent of having GPS these days, knowing exactly where you were at, at any time that you wanted to, to work that out. So how it works is you need a reference and like in the latitude, the reference was the North Star right above the North Pole that didn't move in the sky relative to the Earth. So that's your reference. The reference in this case is time. So you needed a watch that you could set the time at solar noon in Greenwich, the prime meridian, which is where they chose the prime meridian to be. You set the time in Greenwich and then as you sailed away from Greenwich, any time at, at, uh, you could work out when solar noon was. And the easiest way to work that out is, is uh, put a stick in the ground or a pin in a board and you keep measuring the shadow until the shadow is the shortest. So it'll be uh, a certain length that'll get shorter and shorter and shorter as the sun moves around the sky. And then uh, it'll start to get longer again. And the exact time of when it's the shortest, you need to note that time. And you can then reference that time in Greenwich to that same time where you are. And because you know the Earth rotates at 15 degrees an hour, you can work out exactly how many degrees away from Greenwich you are. So that's how you work it out. So I reckon we uh, get our nerd on and we uh, go back to the office and uh, I'll attempt to actually show you an example of working that out to work out the exact location of uh, Perth using the uh, sol and noon uh, time and comparing that to Greenwich and then working out uh, where we are using the, the method I just described. So let's uh, get back to the office. I'm back here in the office and I'll attempt to um, explain how, um, how to work out the uh, longitude um, we'll work out what the solar noon is for Perth and then we'll relate that back to Greenwich solar noon and then we'll work out exactly how many degrees that is and we'll work out exactly our um, longitude. I won't work out, I won't worry about the uh, latitude because that is a lot easier to work out and they had already worked that out some uh, a long time before but the longitude was always the problem and always a reason why they kept on uh, running into things and getting lost. So let's uh, get on the computer. I'll try and do it graphically and then we'll do the calculation and work out exactly what the uh, longitude is for here in Perth where I live. So let's go. Here we have a view of the globe, a view of the Earth, and you can see around the middle, around the equator, is the latitude uh, lines and the, what degrees they are. And then um, we have the longitude going uh, up and down. So here's the equator and the longitude uh, 10 degrees north, 20 degrees north, 30 degrees north. Where we need to start is the prime meridian, which is this line here. And if you have a look, it goes right through Greenwich in, um, in England. And as you go uh, left, you're going west. And as you go right, you're going east. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reference Greenwich right the way around to Australia. So if we keep on going around, all the way around to here. This is 180, so that is exactly 12 time zones away. Uh, obviously there's 24 time zones. And if you keep on going, we're in uh, time zone 16 uh, here in Perth where I live. Um, so the Earth obviously spins that way, so we're 16 time zones in the direction that the Earth spins. Uh, or eight time zones if you go backwards, starting at this line, the prime meridian, going back to uh, Western Australia and Perth, where eight time zones. Normally you can um, work out what the lunar noon is. We're gonna cheat a little bit and we're just gonna look it up um, because I haven't uh, had time to, to actually video that part of it, but we're gonna look up the solar noon. These days there is calculators that can tell you that. So we're gonna look that up and uh, we're gonna use that solar noon. So you can see on the screen here, we've got a website where you can uh, drag a little pin around and it will calculate the solar noon for you. And uh, it's around 12.18 for Perth. So it's not exactly 12 like midday is. That's not the highest point of the sun. Uh, it's about 12.18.
There's also uh, charts to to calculate. Uh, it's not exactly perfect, and there's charts to calculate the imperfections to get it deadly accurate as well. I've already done those calculations, um, but if you want to look them up, I'll put some information down below on, on where the, those types of calculations are. But 1218 is the solar noon, and that's what we'll be using to, to do this calculation. So let's go and have a look at a, uh, a graphic, and we'll uh, count the time zones around and see how we work that out, and then use that to uh, do the calculation. Here we have a, um, an image um, of all the time zones and the globe, and here is the prime meridian, goes through uh, Greenwich there. So where the Earth spins um, this way, so we're going to go this way and uh, count those time zones. So there's pretty well um, 12 to the middle and then um, another four. And so there's 16 time zones. But as you can see, Perth's not right in the middle. Um, there's 16 time zones um, or eight if you go from this direction. Um, so if you were doing this, uh, obviously, in the, if you were sailing around your ship, you wouldn't have had um, a time zone map like this. You would have had to keep uh, tabs on as you were moving how many times those you'd pass and or how many times the clock had gone around because once you get to 12, you need to start again. So once you get to 12 and the international date line, you keep on counting to, to get to 16. Um, or you could work backwards going this way. So 16 time zones, um, and it is a... Uh, solar moon of uh, 12 uh, hours and what did I say 18 minutes so let's uh, get to the paper and we'll do that calculation and we'll see how accurate we are to uh, getting Perth's lat long so we have our workbook here so let's uh, work this out so we know we have 16 time zones we know that the earth rotates um, 15 degrees per hour over 24 hours. So we know that it's 15 degrees per hour. We know that the solar noon here in Perth, because we looked it up, is 1218. Solar noon is 1218. So what we then need to do is work out, so we have 16 time zones and we have 1218. So we need to decimalize this 1218. So if you uh, decimalize that, it becomes 12.3. Um, so you have 16 time zones and 0.3. So you end up with 16.3 time zones from Greenwich to where I am located. So what you've got to do is to, uh, multiply the 16.3 by the 15 degrees per hour, and that equals 244.5 degrees. So um, the way that the sun travels around the Earth to us uh, it would be going between Greenwich and where I am, 244.5 degrees. So what you've got to do is now um, go the other way because we're on the other hemisphere. So the easiest way to do that is 360 minus 244.5 equals uh, 115.5. And if we have a look on the computer, um, and we'll uh, go and have a look where Perth is on Google Earth, and we'll see uh, how accurate we are. So here we are on a computer zooming in, slowly getting a higher and higher resolution, looking for 115.5. And as we zoom in, you can start to see there's 115.45, is it? And then 115.5 is right through here. So as you can see, by comparing the solar noon where we are compared to the solar noon where Greenwich is, we can very accurately find our longitude. And this is the way they used to do it at sea, but they really needed that time, that time piece that could be the reference between where they were and Greenwich. So there you are, that's how you work out um, longitude. And um, as I said, you know, this was the greatest uh, problem of its time. It was the equivalent of us um, you know, in the eighties working out how to get GPS satellites up into space and how to um, calculate uh, a lat and a long from GPS satellites. Back in those days, it was a massive problem and it went on for many years. This guy took 50 years to make a, a timepiece, a, a maritime chronograph, accurate enough to be able to do this. And it would have saved you know, thousands of people's lives, thousands of ships, and it also led to uh, a lot of exploration because they could accurately chart and map 
um, all of these new lands that they were discovering. If anyone is actually uh, an expert in this, I definitely um, welcome the comments and, and any additional uh, things. See, make sure I work that out correctly. Um, the answer was correct, but uh, that was my methods. I, I'm no uh, mathematician, but um, that's how I uh, come about to working it out. Um, so yeah, please, uh, if you know actually what you're talking about, put some comments to below because uh, yeah, this is just an interesting piece, especially for us uh, guys that get out and about using these sorts of things, uh, talking about lat latitudes and longitudes. It's always interesting to know, you know, the journeys of these sorts of uh, concepts throughout the time. So anyway, that's, uh, hope you had a, uh, hope it was interesting and uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to get out and about. Um, over here at least, restrictions are starting to loosen up. So we'll be able to use some of these lats and longs and uh, use some of this equipment to get out and explore. So until the next, next one, I'll uh, catch you later. Have a good one.